Hello and welcome to Australia in Space TV. My name is Chris Cubbage, I'm the Executive Editor with My Security Media and we're in Adelaide for the 14th Australian Space Forum with the Andy Thomas Space Foundation. Uh, I'm joined by Bohr Pedersen who is the Sales Director with KSAT. Bohr, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you for uh, inviting now, me. And now you're Norwegian or a Norwegian company as well. I'm not saying your name correctly. How, <laughs> how, how do you pronounce Bohr? Burra. Okay, right. Yeah. Well, I can't, I'm not even going to try. <laughs> no. Uh, but no, it's Bora, okay. um, yeah. tell us about KSAT. Uh, Konsberg uh, is the company, uh, but obviously doing satellite services. But yeah, Konsberg and what brings you to Australia? And welcome, by the way. Thank you. No, it's always nice to be here and back in Australia and Adelaide. Yeah. Uh, so our company, um, so my company is established in. 1967, but my yes. our mothership, which is Kongsberg, Kongsberg. it's from 1814. That's so it's, amazing. It is. So it's 200 and was it uh, eight years old now? <laughs> nice. So it's so it's, it's so uh, quite an established business. I would say, say so. I would yeah, say right. so. Yeah. Okay. So I, I didn't. I wasn't around from the start, but, yes, but I've yes. been for 24 years in in KSAT. Yeah. Um, so how, and how long have they been in space? Did you say? I'm sorry. 50 ish. 50 odd years, though, yeah, 60s, yeah. We, we had, um, we started in 67 uh, before it was many satellites, but, but we also, um, I mean, we did a little bit of remote sensing with, with the, the high tech processing uh, equipment, yeah, right. like high tech as in 1970s, but, yes. but still we, it, we always we advanced. Always um, into the, um, the, uh, that, uh, the high end production and, and, Today we have uh, reserving, uh, monitoring Australian waters for oil spill. Um, most of, of the Australian coastline, but not, not everything. Then we have uh, satellite ground stations in Minginyu right. uh, in Western Australia. Yeah. Uh, and, and then we have two other Kongsberg companies. So if, if I'm um, uh, recalling correctly, you're, you're in the process of updating those ground stations, right? Including yes. Minginyu. But there's a couple of others that you have, and they're going through an upgrade right now. Yeah, we we uh, we have. Um, so KSAT is growing fast. We are yeah. we are establishing ourselves, and and we will upgrade the Minginu with more antennas. We will. There was one in Chile as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it. so in total, we have 250 antennas around the world right. in 27 locations. Nice. And uh, Australia is one uh, in Minginu, but we will establish more. Um, and also we're looking into becoming a, a commercial provider for lunar missions. So um, satellites and, and missions going cislunar or to, to the moon, that will also be supported by, by us. Nice. Where are you based in Australia in terms of headquarters? Are you here in Adelaide? No, we, so our uh, sister company, Concord Defence, are located in Canberra. We have another uh, uh, sibling or, or <laughs> relative, <laughs> Kongsberg Maritime in Fremantle. Ah, okay. But KSAT, um, we are uh, working a bit remote from uh, 69 degrees north in Tromsø, Norway. Ah, okay, great. Okay, so nice. so it's, uh, it's far away, but, but um, it's, it's quite... Um, we're working very well with, with Australians. Nice. What's your focus here at the Australian Space Forum? What's your current sort of on the floor there, what are you talking to customers about? We talk to them about our uh, network of ground stations, but, but more and more to about what can you actually use satellite data for. And, and our, sir, our focus uh, is um, near real-time delivery of information because that's the... So you have a lot of like thousands of satellites flying, but, but we, we extract information and try to be precise and very timely to give the end user what they want when they want it. And what should the end user, what kind of questions should they be asking, do you find? Or do you find you have to educate the end users in terms of the capability? How are yeah. you finding the maturity, even particularly here in Australia? Yeah, no, it's, um, so some of the, um, it's a combination of, of, of new people, new to the space industry uh, or customer that have been an existing user of satellite data, not only from KSAT, but from others. So um, sometimes we need to take the whole round with explaining about satellites, and then uh, in other cases, it's more to tell them what we have 
uh, established and, and renewed and, and, and developed over the last years because it's always um, the need to be better, uh, yeah. to either do f or faster and more sensors and, and, and looking at different things. So, um, for example, oil spill monitoring. We do it globally. We deliver information maximum two hours after we have done the sensing. Right. We can do it with radar satellites. Um, we've done that for 20 odd years. And now yeah. we have started yeah. to include normal optical satellites, yeah. the ones that you see on Google Earth. So we can, um, our team of experts back home can, um, we can add an optical image over an oil spill and they can start to look at it like, ah, this is different types of oil. Got it. The, the thick, of oil thickness and, the, and yeah. so it's, uh, I'm lucky, I'm surrounded by a lot of smart people. How are you finding the changing in the economics of space? Because uh, obviously space is getting cheaper, which means there's more pressure on getting, making the data more timely, but also cheaper as well, but more of it uh, correspondingly. So, yeah, what, what's your view on the current economics of space and how it seems to be getting faster, cheaper? And that, that makes yeah. it a challenge for a, a stable company that's been around for a long time, suddenly going, <laughs> hang on, we're getting disrupted, we've got to do it better and cheaper, yeah. uh, with less resources generally as well. Yeah. No, um, my, my uh, initial reaction to that is, uh, there are more satellites and more imagery or more uh, available as yep. uh, data from, from satellites. Uh, but the um, information that we provide to the end user um, is more and more uh, valuable. So it's, it's not so much of the, uh, some of the data will become uh, or is free, but that's more on the agency level. There are more, lots of commercial companies and, and what they do for a living is actually to sell satellite imagery. Yeah. So, and, and we will be a, a, a big buyer of that data and and, uh, and then we do value adding to that product um, and we do it 24-7 uh, and we deliver very fast so so that's our niche so so we can um, we do value adding on on open free data as well yeah. uh, so so it's it's more to tune uh, the massive amount of, of new sensors coming and, and find a way to utilize them. Yep. Uh, uh, open free data is good for yeah. someone, like the Norwegian NICFI program. Um, working with, uh, so the NICFI program will give the, the users free data updated every month between 30 north, 30 south. Um, and, and, but it's only so much you can do with, yep. uh, with that data. Uh, so if you want to do more, um, there will be a need for, for um, high resolutions, faster delivery, etc. What's your observation? You, I take it you've been to Australia before. What's generally today your, your observations or um, uh, view of the Australian space industry? It looks quite, you know, there's a buzz on the floor today. Um, yeah, what's your general take on the Australian space sector? You guys are obviously Im embedded here already. How mm. do you, where do you see our maturity? Uh, I take it you've just come back from Paris and Bangalore, <laughs> I'm assuming. Um, yeah, here you are in Adelaide. You impressed with the Australian space sector in how it presents today? Indeed. And, and yeah, so I've been to a few of the uh, this, these space forums. This is number 14 in yeah. a, a few years. Um, now it's more than a thousand delegates and a hundred and or around 100 exhibitors showing this span from from the uh, different missions and the different initiatives it's amazing and and it's all kind of started back in 2017 when i was here in this center yeah, for the IAC the, yeah. the IAC in 2017 the Australian Space Agency was officially announced uh, you had the CTL uh, signing up to be to have a Australian um, uh, subsidiary so uh, since th those five years, it's been an amazing, and, and the drive here, and, and as um, uh, Palermo uh, Enrique said on yeah. the, the, the speech today, it's um, it's a massive push on the industry, and now ISC back in coming back to Sydney in 2025. Uh, I'm not sure how it will affect the industry itself, but it shows that the momentum that's here in Australia, and and it's also 
good for a small company up in the northern part of Norway to be able to be a part of that uh, yeah. boom here. Well, I think it definitely demonstrates uh, that it's a global uh, sector as well. It's a global industry. But it's wonderful to have a, a Norwegian representative uh, here. Welcome to Australia. Thank uh, you. Bor Pedersen with uh, Konsberg Satellite Services, or KSAT. KSAT. Thanks very much for being on Australian Space TV. Thanks, Chris.